Hi and welcome to this video about my homebrew computer. Uh, today I want to do a deep dive on the FAT16 file system and uh, the implementation of that on my homebrew computer. Uh, what you can see on the screen is the computer, uh, which is always nice to be able to see the actual hardware. Um, but the, um, the small screen there is a, a putty terminal. So I'm going to be uh, using the computer, my homebrew over serial uh, rather than keyboard and LCD output, which is what you normally would see. Uh, it's just, I think, clearer and easier to, to show stuff. Um, so the SD card, I've already formatted it um, using an adapter. Um, it's basically, so it's formatted by my Win 10 laptop. And essentially I've just got a, you can't really see that very easily, but I've got a one gig SanDisk card, which, is a, which I've had for ages. And I'm just going to put that into the SD breakout board of the computer here. And let's switch it on. And if you watch the terminal, it will boot on and you can see the startup message. Um, the blinking lights are just there for fun. Uh, you will have seen those on previous videos. Um, but I want to get right into it in the interest of not making this video too long. Um, so the serial is just 19200 board um, and I've got putty um, connected or showing the input and output. Um, the first thing I want to do though, so this is a, an SD card that's been formatted under Windows 10. If I do a DIR, that's one of the commands I've implemented, uh, it's blank. Uh, but what I know is that to do a DIR, I had to, well, my, my homebrew would have had to read the root file system of the SD card. And that would have been a 512 byte sector, which is uh, cached in location, RAM location 200 on the homebrew. So what I'm going to do is show you, well, first go to the monitor that's built into the homebrew and then dump location 200. So obviously the DIR shown in empty file system, which is what we would expect for a freshly formatted disk. But when we dump that location 200, we can see there's, there's actual content here. And what this is actually showing is um, each directory entry in FAT16 is 32 bytes. Uh, so each of these um, hex dumps you'll see here are um, four lines represents 32 bytes. And you can see the first entry there from 200 to uh, 21. F basically is uh, the first slot. So it says homebrew, which is the name of the volume uh, that I uh, formatted this under Windows. And then you see some other um, system and volume information as well. So 220 contains, uh, you can see uh, the, the hex conversion on the right hand side of this output. Um, some basically information about the, the system. Um, uh, some volume, longer volume information, and uh, 260 is the last entry. Uh, 280 is zero, and that shows that this uh, particular uh, directory entry uh, doesn't have any more um, files to show. So I can quit here, the monitor. Um, so, so that's good. I've got an empty folder and um, if I was to create a program, we could save it to the folder. So let's have a look. Let's do something basic. If I can type, let's just test that out. Works. Let's save it. Um, let's call it hello. Saved. Now if I do a DIR, you can now see we have got a new file in here called hello.prg in the root directory. But let's go to the monitor again and let's dump location 200. So you still see all the same entries as you would have before, um, the volume information, etc. which I'm not going to go into too much detail because that is just created by Windows 10 um, when, uh, when I formatted the SD card. Um, the interesting information, which is what the homebrew is now recording onto the SD card, starts at 280. So here is the four lines uh, which represents the hello.prg. 
and I want to just quickly go through what we're seeing here. So here is the it's a 8.3 is the file system for FAT16. So eight uh, character file name with an optional three character extension. Um, and you can see the ASCII code for hello um, and padded with spaces. Uh, the other thing you noted, you will notice that everything is uppercase. So I convert everything to uppercase because um, FAT16 is not case sensitive. And then the extension is here. There's no dot because that's implied. Um, and there's PRG there. Now, uh, the next few entries are zeros. Um, so some of these are to do with uh, date and timestamps. Uh, I don't have a real time clock, so I'm not recording anything here. But the next most useful piece of information is here, which is um, the cluster number of where this file is stored. So all this is giving us at the moment is the is a directory slots information. It's called what's the name of the file. Um, this byte actually is straight after the extension is important because it tells us the type of the file. Uh, this file is of type normal. Well, well it's, it's a file. You'll see that for a directory, it has a different flag. Uh, and in fact, for um, uh, some of these other uh, entries that are earlier, uh, there's some different flags. Um, and I ignore those when I'm doing a directory listing. I only show things with file type 00, zero and file type 10, which is indicates a directory. So this is a normal file, so we've got file type 00. zero. Um, going back to this word here, this 16-bit uh, number is the cluster number. Um, and this is what FAT stands for, file allocation table. This tells us um, which cluster number has been allocated for this file um, and each cluster is uh, 16k in length so the smallest block that a file can occupy is 16k and each 16k block of this sd card is recorded in a file allocation table uh, which indicates whether this uh, block this cluster is part of a chain of clusters if it's a very long file bigger than 16k for example um, or whether it's the only um, cluster for the file so it basically it describes a linked list um, in the file allocation table uh, but what i know is that even if i didn't know how long the file was i know it starts at cluster 5. now the last four bytes gives me the length so 2c it's little endian 6502 uh, and also fat16 is little endian so 2c 0000, 0, 0, 0 Zero, 0 which makes it two uh, C is forty four in decimal, and uh, that's what you would have seen when I did a DIR a moment ago, as you can see. So that gives me so that's how a file is stored. Essentially, this attribute byte, which is straight after the extension, is zero to indicate it's a file. Um, this is the first cluster uh, allocated to the file. It could be the first of a chain, and that chain is described in the file allocation table, and this is the length. So then um, let's go create a directory. I'm going to call it sub. So I've got a command called mkdir, and it will create something called sub. And you can see that the SD card was wearing for a while there. That's because to create a subdirectory, first we need to... Uh, check that there is no other directory with the same name, which requires reading the current directory. Um, then um, we create a new entry and find a, a, a free cluster. So wherever the next free cluster might be, find that from the file allocation table and then zero that cluster out. You have to make sure that the, um, the entire directory entry um, is zeroed out so that we, the system can rely on uh, where the, the last entry is. Uh, so anyway, um, if I do a directory listing of that, we can see that we now do have a directory called sub. Let's go back into the monitor and look at the the block that's loaded into from the SD card into memory. Um, and 280, as you know, is the program we just created. And then 2A0 is the folder called sub and this is the important thing here you can 
you see that the attribute here is one zero, whereas the attribute for the hello.prg is zero zero. So that indicates it's a directory. Um, again, uh, same format in terms of the, the name and the extension. Um, but here you see the cluster number and the cluster number is six. So that's where this directory will store its entries in cluster six. PRG is stored at cluster five. And then directories have a length of zero. So that's my subdirectory created. But that's not all because when you create a subdirectory, you need some way of going back. Uh, and dot and dot dots by convention is how FAT16 allows you to navigate around. So let me go to the directory. It's called I've got a command called chdir. And then I'll go to the directory. Let's have a look. And you can see by default, you have a dot directory and a dot dot directory, which is quite a clever little convention because these are proper entries in the file system. So let's go to the monitor to show them. They're proper entries in the file system. And the first one is dots and its cluster number is six, but that's the same as the cluster number for sub that I showed you a moment ago. So actually, if you chain directory to just dots, you go, you stay in the directory you're in, so it basically defines the current directory. Then if I continue to the next entry, 220, that's got two dots, and the cluster number for that is zero, and, and by convention, if it's cluster number zero, it, it basically de defines or identifies the root directory. So if you go chd, chd to dot dot, it will actually just take you back to the root directory. So that's um, how that works. And it's quite a clever little way of doing it, really, because it, it kind of treats these special folders as kind of virtual pointers pointing either back to the current directory or the previous directory. And if I can make another subdirectory in here, um, remembering that this folder is cluster six, let's call it sub two so we don't get confused. Well, I don't get confused anyway. So there's sub two. Let's change directory to that. And then we can see dot and dot dot. But if I go to the monitor and dump that. So 2E points to the current cluster, which is cluster seven. And then not, not 2e, 200, and then 220, which is dot dot, points to the previous, the parent folder, which is sub, and we know that's cluster six. So if I now um, change directory to dot dot, all I'm doing is going to cluster six, and there's my parent directory to sub two. So before this video gets even longer than it already is, um, I thought this might be an interesting foray into the depths of FAT16. Obviously, I've done a very light treatment of it, um, especially the actual file allocation table, which I'm not showing here. Uh, but if you take it on trust, for want of a better term, that the file allocation table, essentially each of these cluster numbers, there's uh, at index six of the file allocation table, it will either say this is uh, the, the only cluster for a particular entry, or it will point to another cluster. So if you've got a file that's bigger than 16k, for example, um, you would have to store that in more than one cluster. Uh, and then in the file allocation table, it will show you which clusters are linked together. Um, so this is all built using um, 6502 assembler and um, built from scratch, uh, a lot of reading to make sure I've understood FAT16. Uh, and yeah, I'm quite, quite happy with this. Um, this is, I probably need to be able to remove directories because removing a directory means checking that the, there is no, there are no files or subfolders in there, otherwise you're left with orphan entries. 
uh, before you can delete it but, uh, but that's uh, a thing for another time um, but I hope this was useful and um, thank you for watching my video